Thank you, Lisa, for going after me. Otherwise, I'll be the one who will be hated here. OK, guys. So uh, my name is uh, Ripul. And uh, I'm going to talk about how we manage uh, stateful application on Kubernetes cluster. Uh, today, I think uh, earlier presented, uh, presenters has uh, touched upon uh, various problems uh, that uh, exist there on uh, uh, moving uh, stateful applications to Kubernetes. So uh, there are bits and pieces in my presentation as well. I'm going to uh, uh, go a little bit fast for that and uh, pause whenever uh, I have something new to share with you guys. OK, so first question is why, why, why do we need to move uh, all the stateful application into, into the Kubernetes, right? So uh, Kubernetes is a de facto, it's like an operating system for data center. And so many stateless application has been moved. Uh, and there are thousands of uh, deployments already in production uh, on Kubernetes. But stateful applications are left behind. So what happened is there are many tools and processes that are geared towards Kubernetes uh, are, are, are sitting there. And stateful application, there are different kind of tools and processes. So only, why is it moving ahead? Second. OK. Uh, looks like uh, it doesn't want to. OK, I'll go back. OK. So uh, only solution is to move even stateful applications to uh, Kubernetes. But we want to move it in a way that makes sense, right? We just don't want to lift and shift and put it there. So let's see what are the challenges uh, and how do we solve it uh, to move these application workloads on Kubernetes. So these are the various applications. Uh, like we have stateless applications, all the web applications. Then we have uh, old SQL databases like Postgres and MySQL. Then we have NoSQL databases, new age databases, uh, which uh, uh, like Cassandra and uh, MongoDB, Kaust base. And then we have big data applications like Elk, Elk Stack or Cloud. This big data application is made up of multiple smaller applications or multiple components, and uh, that creates a pipeline of the, of the application. So let's leave uh, alone the web applications, stateless application that has been solved. And let's move towards uh, what are the challenges for stateful applications. OK. So first, uh, SQL databases like Postgres and MySQL, right? What are the requirements for, for this application? Basically, this application needs uh, different kind of volumes. One of the kind they want is uh, transaction logs or a redo logs. And application uh, uh, wants that data to be placed on a faster media like SSD. Uh, and uh, data volume can be uh, placed on HDD to save the cost. So that's, that's easy to solve. Now, I have a trivia question for you guys. What, what database is uh, deployed uh, the most in the world today in production? Anybody has an answer? Anybody? Take a question. Oracle. Oracle has been deployed widely in, in, uh, dip, uh, in production all over the world. So what is the requirement? Especially Oracle Rack, right? Oracle Rack, they have their own automatic storage manager, ASM. Uh, the requirement uh, for that is it needs, first of all, raw volume. It, uh, uh, since it has own o o ASM, and this volume needs to be accessed through multiple nodes. So this, uh, in Kubernetes world, it's called uh, RWX, which is a read-write many. So we need to make sure that the volume is read-write many capable. Now let's go to the next slide. OK. Uh, MongoDB and Cassandra, I think we, uh, many people have touched on this particular thing. I'll just go through this. What happens is whenever this kind of application needs the volumes, uh, it is app replicated. The data is app replicated in the, in, the, in the application. So when application wants three different volumes to place their data, primary and replicas, it assumes that the copies goes to a different physical device underneath. But because of the SDS layer, uh, which is CSI in, uh, uh, provided by CSI in Kubernetes, it may happen that the replicas may end up sharing the same physical device. And uh, losing one physical device can impact multiple replicas, which is not the expectation from the uh, NoSQL database. So this is what, the, what it needs to be. OK. One more new thing here, Cloud Era. So this is another uh, application that is widely uh, deployed today in production. Nobody talks about moving Cloud Era, Cloud Era to Kubernetes, but we uh, did went ahead and tried that. So why? Because it's, it's a tough problem to solve. 
Clouder has many, many different requirements because it has many different components involved there. For an example, I'll, I'll take some example here, like uh, one of the component is Cloudera Manager. So Cloudera Manager uh, relies on underneath uh, storage subsystem to replicate the data. So for failover, basically, it, uh, it needs storage subsystem to do a, uh, do a, have a copy of the data on the, on, the, on the failing site or a failing rack. The another component is Zookeeper. Zookeeper is very uh, latency sensitive component. It's a metadata server. So the volume that it needs uh, to write to has to serve I.O. really fast, so to minimize the I.O. latency. Uh, data node and a name node. So uh, data node requires compute anti-affinity uh, in the cluster. Basically, not two data nodes has to be placed on the same, uh, same uh, host. We need to make sure that all the data nodes are different hosts because it also ha replicates its data uh, uh, in, the, in the application. Okay, so let's move forward. So this was all the requirements from one application. Now, what happens in data center? In data center, a cluster of physical uh, uh, devices is shared among different applications. It's not dedicated uh, physical servers to one particular application. So one function in the organization like HR creates its MySQL or Postgres database and ends up doing, putting redo uh, volumes on one particular physical device. And another database for a different organization in the same company may end up sharing that particular physical device. So this is, this is what we want to uh, avoid when, when consolidation is, uh, is involved, right? Basically, this uh, also result into IO blender effect where IOs from one particular volume is affecting uh, IOs to the another, another volume, basically a, a noisy neighbor issue. So these are all the challenges of the, of the placement of the volume, right? Day one challenge is when you want to deploy your application. There are many challenges involved about day two because there's a stateless application, you need to protect your data, you need to move your data, or you need to clone your data, right? So there are many challenges involved there as well. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's see how, how are these applications deployed today, right, in, in, uh, in production. Most of these uh, applications, let's say for an example, Postgres, is uh, deployed in VM. So it's like a Postgres uh, uh, process, and, uh, and uh, for, a, for a data, uh, volume, it needs a VMDK file. So the application is composed of uh, a, a, a couple of uh, VMDK files and, and process, right? To, so when you want to protect that, it's easy. It's, you can just take a snapshot of the vol uh, VMs and, and you can move that uh, snapshot or VMDK files to other place and then restart the process. So that's easy. Now in Kubernetes world, the minimum uh, the, or, or the, the most, uh, uh, the small amount, uh, the small, smallest object is pod. But around this pod, there are many different Kubernetes objects like PVC, secrets, services, config maps, right? So application is made up of these various objects. Uh, so this allows uh, more modularity in your application, but then it ends up having, creating so many objects that you need to take care of. So this is one application, like a simple application like MySQL or Postgres. Let's see other application that we talked about, like MariaDB or MongoDB, Elasticsearch, right? The complexity just grows more and more. So, so what do we need to do, right? So all, all of these workflows that are, that are required for our stateful applications, like a snapshot or a clone or a restore, right? So snapshot, what are the, what are the complexities taking a snapshot of a stateful application? So today the CSI layer provides uh, one particular volume snapshot. Uh, it provides only snapshot on one particular uh, volume, but that's not the application uh, is built, right? Application has multiple volumes and each volume can have a dependent data into each other. For an example, redo volume and the data volume. It is a dependent data. You cannot just take snapshot of one volume and then another volume and then consider it as an app consistent snapshot. We need a concept of consistency group, right? So we need to create the CGs of those PVCs and then create a snapshot of those CGs. Uh, and not only that, on, uh, also we need to create snapshot of other objects that, that makes up the uh, Kubernetes application here, the stateful application. Uh, clones, same thing with the clones. We need to take the clones of the application and not, not just PVC. We have to elevate the workflow of all these data heavy workflow, uh, workflows at the, at the application layer. That is what a Kubernetes user expects, uh, expects these days. 
Uh, how about backup and restore, right? When you do a backup, basically, uh, uh, you need to, uh, everything is based on a snapshot. Most of the storage stuff system works on a snapshot whenever a management of the data is involved. You need, you take a snapshot, once a snapshot is app consistent, crash consistent, then you have another workflows around it, like a backup and restore. When you take a backup, uh, we should take the data, but not only data, the metadata around the backup, which creates the application, also take it with it, and have a self-contained copy of that backup. And that's easy to do for, for, for a full copy, but then you have to do a uh, backup incrementally. So you should not have multiple backups with the full data. Backup has to be incremental in nature. So you need to uh, work through all these complex problems uh, to make sure that you have an efficient uh, data management capabilities of, of your stateful application. Okay. So just quickly uh, recap uh, the, uh, the issues. So basically we have placement issues where we need to work with uh, affinity, uh, the storage affinity, storage and compute affinity, storage anti-affinity. Storage anti-affinity is also important here because we want to make sure that multiple copy of the same data does not sit on the same device. Uh, and then uh, when uh, you pack more and more application on the same cluster, the, uh, the, the problem just grows. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think uh, everybody uh, agrees here that data has, has gravity. So deploying and managing these particular uh, stateful applications is going to be uh, tough. So we want to make sure that it's simple enough uh, so that people can uh, embrace it. So these are the features that, that are, uh, these are the storage features that is required uh, from the application. Basically, you need snapshot, clones, and affinity, anti-affinity that I already talked about. Uh, QoS, you need thin provisioning, uh, and uh, you need encryption, compression for sure. And on top of this, of course, your, uh, uh, the performance of your, your storage stack has to be, has to be uh, very uh, quick. Okay, so how do we solve it, right? How, ca how can we solve this problem? So uh, at uh, Robin, uh, in Robin platform, what, what, so let's go back. What is the, what is the core requirement, requirement for an application? It needs three, three things. First, it needs a compute, then storage, and network. So for compute, we uh, rely on Kubernetes to provide the compute, and it also allows the application to move anywhere and also deploy anywhere, including bare metal or VM or uh, any of the cloud providers. With this compute, we have the enterprise-grade uh, storage stack. This is an uh, inbuilt storage stack that, that was built uh, uh, in-house with all the features like uh, uh, snapshot application backup. But it is, again, a, a storage, uh, uh, the application aware stack. So the volume that uh, it's serving IO to, it knows for, for which particular application it is serving IO and what is the expectation, what is the SLA. And if that SLA is not met, the volume can be moved around uh, automatically. So, so, uh, so that's the uh, advantage of having an app-aware application uh, uh, storage. And we have a built-in networking stack. Now, why do we need this networking stack? As I, as we discussed before, right, uh, for Oracle. Uh, so, one of the requirement from Oracle is it embeds its IP address into database itself. For Kubernetes, uh, the the containers are ephemeral, pods are ephemeral. If it moves around or if it restarts, there is no guarantee that IP address is going to be preserved, right? But if that is the case, then Oracle will not start. If it moves around, then there is no way you can uh, start, the, uh, start the database. So we need to persist the IPs. So, so we have our own uh, networking module to persist those IPs to address those challenges. And on top of this, we have our application workflow manager, which basically uh, provides the usability or the or the experience of having a one-click deploy uh, snapshot and all the other data management workflows. So that's, that's the magic sauce. OK. Let's go to a demo quickly. Uh, let's see. OK. So we are having some challenges with the in, uh, Wi-Fi here. So I have just created some uh, tabs, already opened the tabs and kept the page ready. OK. So when you install Robin, this is what user is presented with. We are in an app store like an environment. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, how do we? 
I need to just a second. Mm. Mm. Uh, how do I change the slide? Hey Siri, help me with the problem here. <laughs> Don't know. Okay. Okay, got it. Sorry for the delay. Okay. Is good? Think so. Okay, perfect. So when you install uh, uh, Robin platform, basically you are presented with this uh, screen where all the different applications uh, uh, you can deploy from. It's like an app store kind of a view. Basically, just click it, click. You click the app, and then uh, provide the details that what you want, and then it creates the application for you. So as you can see, uh, we have Cassandra, Cloudera, CentOS, uh, MariaDB, uh, Hadoop, Mapper, Hadoop, Kafka, Oracle Database, SAP HANA, everything. Uh, we all the different kind of applications, stateful applications we can support. Let's look at one of the application, uh, Cloudera, right? Because that's one of the uh, complex one. So as you can see, Cloudera, one of the components is called uh, CM Server, which is the Cloudera Manager. So here, for it, that, that, uh, that particular component, what you can say is what kind of a volume you want. You want SSD or HDD. Since this cluster does not have HDD, uh, I cannot pick HDD. But if you have a, have a hybrid cluster where you have HDD and SSD mode both combined, you will be able to uh, change this option. Then if, uh, if it's an app protected or, uh, or you want storage subsystem to replicate it, then you can pick, uh, you want storage to replicate. And then you can provide what fault domain you want to replicate to do. Uh, you want basically host, disk, rack, or if your data center is configured, you can always pick data center. These are the mount point ins inside the container. And if you go a little bit here on the right side, here you can basically say that what are the other characteristics that you want for this particular volume. You want 4K or 512, you want compression, encryption, and uh, also, I, I'll go to workload later. Let's see. OK, so if you go to data node, right? If you go to data node here, here you can say it's app protected. And here you can say that what kind of workload this is. Is it an ordinary workflow? Like there are no placement restrictions to put this volume on. If it's latency sensitive, if it's latency sensitive, basically it's going to make sure that it does not share the spindle with anybody else. If it's dedicated, then the same thing. So these are the workload characteristics that you can assign it to a volume. So these are the volume uh, configuration. Now, these are the placement rules that I talked about, the affinity and anti-affinity rules, right? So here, one of the placement policy that you are saying that prevent more than one data node container on the same node or the same rack or the same data center. So it's going to make sure that no two data node comes on the same host. So this is a uh, compute anti-affinity. Now, how about uh, storage and compute affinity, right? Here, enforce storage and compute for a data node to be run on the same node. So this is storage. Uh, affinity. So this is how uh, you achieve the all the uh, uh, different combinations of storage and compute and affinity and anti-affinity. Okay. All right. And once you pick all these uh, different and of course for different role there are different characteristics. You can have some uh, defaults assigned to it, and if not, you can always go and change it. Right. You can turn on and turn off role. Let's say if you don't want Impala, you can turn it off. If you want it, then you can turn it on. So it's highly customizable, and but easy to use. Once you have this, uh, uh, made your, your choices, you can go and provision the application by one click. And it is going to figure out uh, the whole plan. It's going to figure out all the compute and storage placements and everything. And then uh, you can uh, basically have the application up and running ready. So once application is up and running, let's say, uh, OK, I'll go through the Oracle uh, uh, screen one, one time, let's, let's see. OK, so for Oracle, right? Oracle, you have different volumes like uh, grid volume and uh, redo volumes. 
And here you can see the volumes are shared volumes. That is a requirement from Oracle. And here is the range where you can see it's a uh, file system is raw. So it's a raw volume. You don't need the, any ext 4 or any other file system placed on the volume. And for grid volumes, basically, again, you can choose the entire affinity here. OK, so that's the Oracle uh, configuration. Let's look at the how once application deployed. So for an example, this cluster has multiple applications deployed uh, together, like Cassandra. Uh, we have a CentOS VM running on this uh, uh, as a container. Then we have Couchbase, uh, Elk, Elk Stack, uh, MariaDB, MySQL, Splunk, and Oracle. So these are all applications running on single cluster right now. Let's look at one of them. Let's look at the Cassandra, right? Now let's dive into the, the workflow part of it, how, what, how the workflow looks, at, looks like. So this particular uh, application has two containers, but these two containers has these six different volumes. And uh, as you can see, there are root volumes and uh, data volumes. So when you take a snapshot, you need to make sure that it's a consistent snapshot, right? So you need to group these volumes, you need to create a consistency group, and then take a snapshot. So when you, uh, and to take a snapshot, you can go to manage here. And here you can configure your snapshot, like hourly, daily, weekly. Or if you want to take the snapshot manually, you can go back here and then say create a new snapshot. It's going to present with the name. You can say snap to create, and it's going to go and create a snapshot. So what it is doing underneath is it's taking a snapshot of the whole application, including PVC, config max, secrets, basically the whole uh, uh, the, the combination of objects that, that makes up the app Kubernetes application. OK. So while this guy is taking a snapshot, it's going to be quick. OK. So snapshot is done, 23 seconds. And once snapshot is done, basically, what are the other workflows that we discussed, right? The clone. So here is a thin clone. Once snapshot is done, you can take a clone. Click on this. Let's see if it's going to come up. Wi-Fi. Hopefully, it should be fine. OK, good. So clone is basically just give a new clone name, my new clone. And everything else remains as it is. If you want to change it, you can change it. But if you want exactly the same copy running on your test uh, environment, then just give a new name and just do a clone. And it's going to give you the whole functional application, clone application running. It's going to create a clone of your storage volumes. You're going to create a clone of your config maps, everything. OK. So that's clone. And let's look at the same thing for rollback. Let's just refresh the screen. OK. So same thing you can do for backup. When you do a backup, same thing happens. Basically, it takes the whole backup. And then uh, if you want to do a restore or a rollback, you can always do the same thing here. And it's going to do the whole thing. That's it. Just one click. No other change is required. Upgrade, same workflow, one click upgrade. As you can see, uh, the, uh, that a new a version is available, 3.7. The current version is 3.0. So you can just do upgrade. If you want rolling upgrade, you can click this. If you want test upgrade, you can do this. And if you don't want to take a snapshot while upgrade, just do a skip snapshot and just do upgrade. And it's going to upgrade the, uh, your app entire application. OK. So, so as you can see, how, how uh, easy it is right, to, to do the, all the day two uh, management or, or day two uh, data management uh, uh, workflows uh, in, in one click. right? So uh, I have another, another uh, trivia for you guys, one, one last trivia, I promise. Uh, anybody know who wrote the first code for Kubernetes? Who committed the first code for the Kubernetes? Anybody in the house? Who was the first committer to Kubernetes? Correct, Joe Beda. Right. So there was a question to Joe Beda on his Twitter feed. Many people had a question or a feedback or a complaint uh, that Kubernetes is fine. It's running. It, it takes. Uh, it, it runs applications at scale, but they have to manage lots and lots of YAML files. People don't like to edit YAML files and. Uh, managing hundreds of ML files is, is just cumbersome, right? His response was that YAML files is like a, a, a code or a, or a generated code for the, for the Kubernetes. Just, uh, just like, like you don't have to 
go and edit, manage an ML file yourself. It has to be generated. It has to be uh, auto-generated by, by the upper, sub, upper system that, that manages your cluster. So that is what we are trying to achieve here, that you don't need to worry, uh, worry about uh, any underneath, not even YAML files. You don't need to worry about, as you can see in, in, the, in the demo, you never had to wor work with PVC or config map or secrets, anything like that. All those details are buried inside the platform. Okay, and, and accept, is, uh, accept it that in the, in the, in, like you want application developer to focus on, on the development or on their application. You don't want them to learn a Kubernetes terminology or, or, or like, or go back and basically work infrastructure as a code for their daily routine, right? Let them focus on their application and let the Kubernetes infrastructure admin guy work on the, on the platform. So that's what we are trying to achieve uh, with the Robin platform, that take out all the complexity. Okay, uh, I promise last slide. So these are some uh, production environment that we have uh, using Robin platform. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Palo Alto Networks, which is using our uh, Cloudera stack for petabytes of their data in the, in the production for, a, for more than a year or two. Uh, Sabre is using Oracle Rack clusters uh, in the production. Uh, BNP Paribas, which is a big bank in Europe and USA, they are using Elk. Uh, Vital Connect is using MongoDB. So we have various customers which are using various applications starting from NoSQL, SQL, and big data application in production. And we have learned a lot of, lot of things from them. And we, it's a continuous feedback loop from customers to uh, product improvement. And uh, they have various different environments as well, like Palo Alto is on bare metal, uh, Sabre is having a sand environment, so they, they have already, ex uh, already their sandboxes available there, so uh, we work on top of that. Uh, and Vital Connect, and uh, uh, they are on, on uh, uh, cloud. We have some demos that uh, you can take a look later on. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask now, or, or we are always in the back uh, uh, in the room. And uh, we are at the boot 96 uh, for the KubeCon. And if you need to reach out to a developer, uh, uh, to Robin, you can always join slack.robin.io. Uh, just one closing comment. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, now <laughs> you are to keeping them up, from their me off the <laughs> party fun. It's yeah. okay, I'll just stand here. What's so, the yeah, just last comment uh, that uh, we at Robin try, try to achieve that today we uh, distinguish between stateless and stateful application, but we want to elevate or have an experience to end users so that there is no distinguish between stateless and stateful application. It's just Kubernetes application. That's it. That's, that's what we are trying to achieve here. Thank you. Sounds like a good segue.